Hi guys, this video is going to be about DNA separation based on size of DNA molecules. So, um, in our, it, this is one of the techniques that are in, an important part of most DNA uh, manipulations. So, let's begin. So, what we've got to imagine is that, you know, normal, the DNA of an organism is quite long. And using restriction enzymes or some physical methods, we can break this DNA into smaller fragments and um, some of them will be large and some of them will be small. Okay, so, so we've got our genomic DNA here and we've uh, treated it with enzymes, uh, restriction endonucleases that have digested the molecules down into smaller fragments, but they're of varying sizes. So how do we separate this DNA? So what is usually done is a process called gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis. And it uses a polymer, a carbohydrate polymer called agarose. Okay, so you can make a note there. It's essentially a carbohydrate polymer that forms a gel. Okay, so it's an agarose, an agarose gel. It forms a carbohydrate polymer and um, it forms these kind of pores uh, which are of kind of random sizes, but it what that means is it these are the pores through which DNA molecules can move. Okay, um, right. Now the principle is that the gel will be something like this, you know, uh, three dimensional. All right, so it will be a three dimensional gel polymer, and Essentially, we'll put our mixture of DNA into wells that have been kind of cut into the gel, sort of. Okay, so there's our wells. We, we put our mixture of DNA samples in there. So let's just say we have one sample, we have another sample in there, and another sample. Of DNA there okay and remember this gel substance has got pores in it through which DNA molecules can move and somehow we need to make sure that the movement is based on size so and that is the case so DNA molecules can move through this gel but the extent or distance or speed at which those DNA molecules move through this gel is based on the size of DNA fragment. So larger DNA fragments will move more slowly through the gel. Okay, so larger fragments move more slowly through the gel. Larger Fragments move more slowly, and obviously, smaller ones in the same amount of time will move further because they're moving more quickly. Okay, smaller fragments move more move more quickly, and so in in the same amount of time, they will move further through the gel. Okay, but what is actually making them move in the first place? Now, this is important because we need to uh, remind ourselves a little bit about DNA structure. Remember that DNA is made up of nucleotides and those nucleotides are joined to each other by phosphodiester bonds. And nucleotides are joined phosphate to sugar and so on. So I'll just draw the others 
got the strand on the left side. Not the best diagram of DNA ever, but you get the point. Okay, so here we have a section of DNA double helix, uh, nucleotide, uh, sorry, nitrogenous bases in the middle, pentose deoxyribose sugar, and phosphate sugar phosphate backbone there. Now the important property of, uh, or, or the important structural feature of, of the DNA here is the fact that these phosphate groups are very negatively charged. They are very negatively charged and we can take advantage of that in this method because we can make the DNA molecules move in a certain direction by placing an electric field across the gel such that um, there's a positive charge on this side and there's a negative charge on, on the other side and in that way the, posit the negatively charged DNA molecules will then be induced to move towards the positive charge um, and so they start moving through the pores in the agarose gel. However, as we've already said, larger fragments will move more slowly. They, in the same amount of time, they will travel further. In, let's, sorry, they will travel a less lesser distance in the gel, whereas smaller fragments will move more quickly and travel further in the gel. And after after a set amount of time, we will see that. If we can visualize the DNA after a set amount of time, we'll get l large fragments here, and going down here, we'll have smaller fragments, and so on. And, and if we have different DNA samples, we'll, we'll likely get a different profile, because restriction endonucleases only cut at specific sequences, and because different samples of DNA will have different sequences, we will possibly get different sized fragments. Okay, so this is just separation of DNA based on size, and this has been gel electrophoresis.